So in the last lecture, uh, we have seen how to uh, find the analytic function when uh, the real part is given or uh, the imaginary part is given. Okay. Now uh, we know how to use uh, the Milne-Thompson method to find uh, the analytic function if we know uh, the real part and if we know the imaginary part. And now uh, in this lecture, uh, we'll see how to uh, use the Milne-Thompson method to find the analytic function if uh, the algebraic sum or the linear combination of u and b is given. So uh, suppose uh, you are given with uh, u or you are given with uh, b, then uh, we need to see how we are able to find the analytic function using the thompson method. Okay. So let us see the problems uh, based on this. Okay. So let us see if the algebraic sum so if u plus v or u minus v is okay. So today uh, we have to see what happens if the real part, the sum of uh, real and imaginary part is given. Okay. So now uh, we'll try to have the question on this. So we'll go with the example. Find the analytic function f of z is equal to u plus iv such that u plus v is equal to 2 sin of 2x on e raised to 2y plus e raised to minus 2y minus 2 cos of 2x. Okay. So this is what is given to us. Okay. Now uh, we have to find the analytic function f of z is equal to u plus i. So let us uh, call this example. Okay. So what you will be having the first step f of z is equal to u plus iv this is equation 1 p and analytic function with what is given u plus v is equal to 2 sine of 2x on e raised to 2y plus e raised to minus 2y minus 2 cos of 2x. Okay, so this is given and this is what uh, is the first step that we have to consider. Okay, now after this what we have to do is uh, we have to multiply this as we have given u plus v. So I need to find out uh, where the term is u plus v. So we multiply this by i. Okay, so we can have multiplying Equation 1 by i bk. So, what we are able to get is so i into f of z is equal to i into u plus iv. So, it is i u plus i square v. What we know is uh, we know i square is equal to minus 1. So, I can write this as i u minus v. Or I can write i times f of z is equal to minus v plus i times u equation okay we always write real part and then imaginary part 
so we have to follow uh, that uh, standard now what we can do is we can add equation 1 and 2 okay so what we can do is adding equations 1 and 2 we get okay so what we are able to get here uh, see this f of z plus i f of z is equal to u plus i v plus minus v plus i u is be careful for the terms okay then uh, only we will get the correct answer so here what we can have is we can have 1 plus i times f of z is equal to so this is u minus v plus i times u plus v okay and now uh, we can write this as 1 plus i times f of z is equal to capital u plus i times capital v so let this equation 3 and we can say where capital u is equal to u minus v is real part real part of analytic function is an analytic function 1 plus i into f of z and we have v is equal to u plus v okay, which is imaginary part of analytic function 1 plus i into f of z. Okay. So this is what uh, you will be having. Now see what is given. Okay. So you got here. Uh, this is uh, u minus v and this is uh, u plus v. And now we have to see whether u minus v is given or u plus v is given. Okay. So we can see here what is given. U plus v. Okay. And uh, hence uh, we write here. So what we write here? Hence v is equal to u plus v is equal to twice sine of 2x on e raised to 2y plus e raised to minus 2y minus 2 cos of 2x. So we can write. This is imaginary part of analytic function one plus i into f of z. So this becomes the analytic, uh, imaginary part of the analytic function. Uh, this three, okay, and hence uh, we can use the method. Milne Thompson method, which is used to find the analytic function if the imaginary part is given. So, here the imaginary part is given. And now we have to uh, write our steps, the remaining four steps accordingly. Okay. So, here I uh, will simplify this first. And then, please be careful now onwards. Uh, this is a capital V. So, you should write capital V, not small u and small uh, v. So small u and small v are the real and imaginary part of the original analytic function f of z. Okay. So I, I can uh, divide the numerator and denominator by 2 and I can write this as sine of uh, 2x upon e raised to 2y plus e raised to minus 2y by 2 minus cos of 2x. Okay. So we got this, uh, the numerator and uh, denominator is divided by 2 and that's why we got this. Now, what we know, okay, so we have a formula, correct, what is the formula? T, we have cos hyperbolic z is equal to e raised to z plus e raised to minus z by 2, okay. So this is the formula for cos hyperbolic z. 
and hence uh, we can use this formula here as we have the exponential functions and uh, we can write this as so v is equal to sin of 2x on this is cos hyperbolic 2y minus cos of k okay. so this is a simple version or better version of this function p and now uh, we have to so first step already we have simplified that uh, we have considered the analytic function then now we know this is going to be the imaginary part so second step we have to consider what is the second step finding the first order derivative so we have psi1 of xy is equal to gamma v by gamma y see here i am using the capital uh, v okay and now we have to find out the derivative of this term with respect to y so what we know is uh, sin 2x is a constant so here we can uh, have this minus 1 upon what will be having hyperbolic cos of 2y minus cos of 2x bracket square so the derivative of 1 upon x is minus 1 uh, upon x square and now the derivative of this term with respect to y so it will be 2 hyperbolic sin of 2y okay and then so uh, we can write this sy1 of xy is equal to so if we simplify this what we can have is minus 2 okay uh, see this term sin of 2x sin hyperbolic of 2y upon you have cos hyperbolic 2y minus cos hyperbolic 2x bracket square now uh, this is equation 4 so uh, we have to be careful that uh, we already marked uh, to the equation 3 and so uh, we mark this as equation 4 okay and now we have to consider the next uh, function psi2 of xy is equal to gamma v by gamma x so here we have to consider uh, u upon uh, v rule so we will be having this as cos hyperbolic 2y minus cos of 2x into the derivative of this term so we'll be having 2 cos of 2x minus sin of 2x remains as it is okay and the derivative of denominator so we can have this is 2 sin of 2x so the derivative of cosine is going to be minus sin minus already we have so it is plus and so we get this and this term divided by hyperbolic cos of 2y minus cos of 2x bracket square so this is e square okay let us simplify this okay so we have sin 2 of xy is equal to so what this term is Twice hyperbolic cos of 2y into cos of 2x minus uh, will be having here 2 cos square 2x minus 2 sin square 2x on hyperbolic cos of 2y minus cos of 2x bracket square. So this is. 2 hyperbolic uh, cos of 2y into cos of 2x minus 2 we can have cos square 2x plus uh, sin square 2x so sin square 2x and here uh, we have this term hyperbolic cos of 2y minus cos of 2x bracket square okay and now what we can write is sin 2 of xy is equal to this term is going to be 1 so we can have twice hyperbolic cos of 2y into cos of 2x minus 1 upon hyperbolic cos of 2y 
minus cos of 2x bracket square. This is our next equation. Okay, so we got the first order derivative with respect to y. Uh, we got the first order derivative with respect to x. And now uh, we have to think of uh, putting the x is equal to z and y is equal to 0. So the next and the third step. So what we can do is put x is equal to z and y is equal to 0 in equations 4 and 5. So we have what we'll get is psi 1 of z0. So now uh, see this uh, psi 1. Okay, so here we have this term will be 0 because we are putting y is equal to 0. So this entire term goes uh, 0. And hence, what we get here is 0. And what about uh, psi 2 at uh, z0? So psi 2 at uh, z0 is equal to what you will have here twice cos of I have probably cos of uh, 0 is going to be 1. So it is cos of 2z minus 1. And here uh, what we get is 1 minus cos of 2x bracket square. So this x will change to z now. Okay. And hence uh, we get here, uh, this is going to be 2z. Okay. So now uh, we can see this is equal to, I can write this as minus uh, 2, 1 minus cos of 2z upon 1 minus cos of 2z bracket square. So you can cancel here one bracket and uh, you'll be having psi 2 of z0 is equal to minus 2 upon 1 minus cos of 2z. Okay. So what do we know about uh, this? See, since 1 minus cos of 2 theta is equal to 2 sin square theta. Okay. So that's what uh, we know. And hence, this we can write as minus 2 upon 2 sin square theta. So here we'll get 2 sin square z. So I'll be having 1 upon sin square z. But 1 upon uh, sin is cosec. So this is minus cos x square z. So we get psi 2 of z0 is equal to minus cos x square z. So we got the value of uh, psi 1 at z0, psi 2 at z0. And hence uh, we are able to write uh, the fourth step and the final step. So we can write here by Milnay Thompson method. The analytic function. Be careful here, the analytic function is one plus i into f of z. Okay, is given as. So what is the formula? 1 plus i into f of z is equal to integral psi 1 of z0 dz plus i times integral psi 2 of z0 dz plus here all having uh, the constant uh, c1. Okay. So where c1 is constant of integration. Okay, so what is C1 here? C1 is going to be constant of integration. 
and now uh, write this values so what i get here i get 1 plus i into f of z is equal to so what do you have here c this is uh, 0 dz plus i this is minus cosec uh, square z dz plus c1 okay so it is i minus cosec square cosec square z dz plus c1 so we know the integration of uh, this is going to be cot of z so plus c1 so we get 1 plus i into f of z is equal to i times cot of z plus c1 so now we are interested in one plus uh, we are interested in f of z and not in 1 plus i times f of z so what we can do is uh, we can uh, divide this equation by 1 plus i so we have here dividing about equation by 1 plus i on both sides big so what we are able to get here here i'll be having f of z here i'll be having i upon 1 plus i and uh, we got here this going to be cot of z plus c1 upon 1 plus i now uh, we know that uh, c1 is going to be constant and so 1 plus uh, c1 upon 1 plus i is going to be constant so i can write here this is equal to f of z is equal to i upon 1 plus i cot of z plus c and so i can uh, write it like this is the required analytic function here C is equal to C one upon one plus. So this is how uh, we are able to get the analytic function f of z when the algebraic sum, okay, u plus v or u minus of uh, v is given. So this is how. Uh, we have to uh, go towards the solution of this um, problem okay, using the Milne-Thompson method. So we have used Milne-Thompson method only to find the analytic function. But here we have to be careful. The analytic function is one plus i into uh, f of z. Okay, so that here we have to take, and after finding the analytic function by using the Milne-Thompson method, uh, we just have to uh, take this one plus i on the other hand side. So the change uh, you need to notice is earlier I used to use uh, c here, now I am using c one, and in the final step I am converting that uh, c one to c. Okay, so that's what earlier I have used c one, and now I am converting it to finally c. So our answer will be as like this: f of z is equal to The function plus uh, c. Okay. So, uh, do you have any uh, doubt in this uh, example? Okay. Uh, that's great. So, good. Uh, so you understood all this. Oh, fine. So let's have the another example. Okay, so we'll go for the next example. So we'll go with the example. Fine. 
the analytic function f of z such that okay, we have u plus v is equal to e raised to x cos y plus sin y plus x minus y on x square plus y square. Okay, so this is the question. And now uh, we go with the solution. So as we have to go with the pre-processing, so first we will go with the pre-processing. So let f of z is equal to u plus iv. This equation one, okay, b, and analytic function such that okay, what is given to you? U plus v is equal to e raised to x cos y plus sine y plus x minus y on x square plus y square. Now uh, uh, we multiply, okay. So multiplying question one by i, we get, so what we are able to get is i f of z is equal to i times u plus i v. So I'll write i times f of z is equal to minus v plus i u where i square is equal to minus 1. So this is equation 2. Now what we can do is adding equation 1 and 2 we have what we are able to get if we will add this we will have 1 plus i f of z is equal to u minus v plus i times u plus v. Okay. And uh, we consider this as equation 3. So what we will get here 1 plus i into f of z is equal to Okay, so you will be having u plus i v. So this is equation 3. Okay, and now uh, what we have where u is equal to u minus v is real part of 1 plus i f of z, which is an analytic function, and v is u plus v is imaginary part of the analytic function 1 plus i into f of z. So what is given to you? So we have v is equal to u plus v is equal to e raised to x cos y plus sin y plus x minus y on x square plus y square. So this is given. Now we know this is the imaginary part. So we have to proceed uh, like the imaginary part. And then so we have to consider the first step f of z. Then the second step, uh, uh, first step f of z and imaginary part. And now we have to consider uh, the second step. So what do we have? Consider psi1 of uh, xy. So this is above V by double Y. So please uh, write this V capital okay, when we are in uh, this kind of examples. So double V by double Y. Now we have to find out the derivative of this term with respect to Y. So E raised to X remains as it is. The derivative of uh, this is cos Y minus uh, sin Y. Plus here you have to use uh, U upon uh, V root. So I'll be having X square plus Y square into minus one minus okay so what is the term we have here okay. this is x minus y remains as it is and the derivative of denominator is 2y and uh, here we get x square plus y square bracket square so if we simplify what we have i1 of xy is equal to 
रेस टू एक्स कॉस वाई माइनस साइन वाई एम सो सिंप्लीफाई दिस टर्म प्लस योर बाइंग माइनस एक्स स्क्वायर माइनस वाई स्क्वायर एंड देन माइनस आह यू कैन हैव टू एक्स वाई एंड दिस माइनस माइनस विल बिकम प्लस सो योर बाइंग टू वाई स्क्वायर On uh, we have x square plus y square bracket square. Now uh, what we get here? Uh, we get psi one of x y is equal to e raised to x cos y minus sin y plus. So you can have this is y square minus two x y minus x square. On x square plus y square bracket square. So this is next equation four. Now uh, we got the first derivative of this uh, b. So let us find the second derivative with respect to x. Okay. So and psi two of x y is equal to double b by double x. So uh, when we want to find out the derivative of this with respect to x, so y will be treated as a constant. So this term will be constant, and hence the derivative of e raised to x is e raised to x. So we have this is cos y plus sin y, and now uh, you have to use again u into v rule, u upon v rule. So x square plus y square. Here the derivative is going to be one minus x minus y and two x. And if you simplify this, what we have here, this is x square plus y square bracket square. Now uh, let us simplify this. So we get psi two of x y is equal to e raised to x cos y plus sin y as it is plus this term is x square plus y square. Minus two x square, minus minus plus two x y. On uh, we have x square plus y square bracket square. Now what we get is psi two of x y is equal to e raised to x cos y plus sine y plus uh, what we get here uh, c. Y square plus two x y minus x square on x square plus y square bracket square. So this is equation five. So now we got uh, the first order derivatives of uh, this u with respect to x and with respect to y. So we have to follow the third step. So what we do in the third step? Put x is equal to z. And y is equal to zero. So in equation, in equations four and five, we get. So what we'll get is psi one at z zero is equal to. Okay. So see the value of psi one. So we'll be having here uh, e raised to z. This is going to be one. This y is zero, so minus z square upon z raised to four. Okay, so we get here. This is e raised to z minus z square upon z raised to four. So it is e raised to z minus one upon z square. So you can see this term is going to be zero. This term is going to be zero. This term will be minus z square. This is zero, so this is z square square. And then you will be having z raised to four. Now, uh, what we get here? So we get psi one of z zero is e raised to z minus one upon z square. And what will happen to psi two at z zero? See, this is going to be zero again. This is going to be one. So we have e raised to z. Again, uh, this term is minus. You will be having Z square upon Z raised to four. So you got e raised to Z minus one upon Z square, and hence 
साइटो ऑफ जेड जीरो इज इक्वल टू ए रेस टू जेड माइनस वन ऑफ वन so you can have uh, this i1 and i2 at z0 and now uh, the fourth and the final step so what we have here by pinle thomson method the analytic function So here we need to be careful. So our analytic function is now one plus i f of z. Okay, is given as. So what you will be having here, one plus i into f of z is equal to integration psi one of z zero dz plus i integration psi two of z zero dz plus c one. Now you know why we are writing C one uh, because this C one we have to convert later on to C. Okay. So now what we have the value where we write where C one is constant of integration. Going to be the constant of integration. So we get one plus i f of z is equal to integration e raised to z minus one upon z square e z plus i integration e raised to z minus one upon z square d z plus c. So you can see this one plus i integration e raised to z minus one upon Z square, Z plus C one. Okay. So now uh, we can have this as this is equal to one plus i. Here we have the integration of Z to Z is Z to Z. The integration of uh, one upon Z square is one by Z and plus C one. So this is one plus i into F of Now we know uh, we don't want this uh, one plus i. We want only f of uh, z. So what we can do is uh, we can divide uh, uh, this equation by one plus i. So dividing of equation by one plus i on both sides. So We get what we are able to get is we'll get f of z is equal to this will get cancelled so we'll be having e raised to z plus one upon e raised to z plus c one upon one plus i and hence we can write f of z is equal to e raised to z plus one plus uh, one upon z plus c one okay. So we can write this is the required analytic function. Here, what is a c? Here, c is equal to c one upon one plus. Here, so that's what uh, we got. Analytic function for this problem. Okay, so we have any doubt uh, this example? So is there any doubt? No. Okay, that's great. Good. Okay, so we'll see uh, one more example uh, based on uh, this type again. Okay. So we'll go for the example. Find the analytic function. F of z is equal to u plus iv. 
such that u minus v is equal to x cube plus y cube minus 3x square y minus 3xy square. So we have to find the analytic function such that uh, this u uh, minus v is this term. Okay. So let us uh, consider the solution. So we have let f of z is equal to u plus iv. This will be equation one. Okay. V and analytic function such that so u minus v. U minus v is x cube plus y cube minus 3x square y minus x y square. Now uh, we multiply. So multiplying equation one by i v gate. So what we are able to get is i into f of z is equal to I u plus i square v, so it is going to be minus v plus i u, and hence uh, we have i times f of z is equal to minus v plus i u. Let this equation two, and now what we do is adding equation one and uh, two. P gate. So what we get is one plus i into f of z is equal to u minus v plus i times u plus v. Okay. So what we know what this is? This is one plus i times f of z is equal to capital U plus i capital V. This is equation three, where capital U is equal to u minus v is Real part of analytic function one plus i into f of z and v is equal to u plus v is imaginary part of analytic function. One plus i into f of z. And now see uh, what is uh, given to us. So we can say what is given to us u minus v. So what it is, whether it is a real part or whether it is a imaginary part. So we can see it is a real part. And hence, what we can see is uh, we have capital U is equal to u minus v uh, is equal to x cube plus y cube minus Three x square y minus three x y square. Okay, so this is the real part, and hence we have to use the Millet-Thomson method uh, for a real part. Okay, so this is the first step uh, we have completed. Now we consider the second step. So what we have consider pi one of x y. Is equal to daba u by daba x. So here uh, we have to consider the first derivative with respect to x, as it is a real part. So we have three x square minus six x y, and here you will be having uh, the term minus three y square. Okay. Now this is going to be the equation four. Okay. And uh, we have pi two of x y is equal to daba u. So we have here daba u by daba y. So the derivative of this term with respect to y, so we'll be having three y square minus three x square minus six x y. So this equation five. So we got uh, the first derivative and the second derivative, and now uh, we have to follow the third step. So what is the third step? We have 
putting the value of x is equal to z and y is equal to 0 so we put x is equal to z and y is equal to 0 in equations 4 and 5 we have so what we have here c y1 at z0 is equal to what it will be pz square and y2 at z0 is equal to minus pz square so this term will go 0 this term will go 0 so you'll be having this is 3z square and this is minus uh, 3z square so our third step is completed now we have to consider the fourth and final step so we can write y Milne Thompson method. Okay. The anadic function. Now please be careful. Here we have the anadic function 1 plus i into f of z. Okay, is given as. So what is the formula by Milne Thompson method? So we have the anadic function 1 plus i into f of z is equal to integration phi 1 of z0 dz minus i integration phi 2 of z0 dz plus c1. So what c1 is? Where c1 is constant of integration. So this being the constant of integration. Now uh, we have this is 1 plus i into f of z is equal to integration dz square dz. So if I want the value we have this minus i integration minus 3z square dz plus c. Okay. Now uh, let us simplify. So what we will get here? The Integration of this is 3z cube by 3. This minus minus plus i, and you will be having 3z cube by 3 plus c. So you can have z cube plus i z cube plus c. So we can write this as 1 plus i into z cube plus c. So here we have this is going to be. One plus i into z cube plus c. So uh, we got one plus i into f of z is equal to one plus i into z cube plus c one. So we got uh, the function one plus i into f of z, but we are interested in f of z, so we have to remove this uh, one plus i. Okay, and hence. What we can do is dividing above equation by 1 plus i on both sides we get. So what we are able to get is we will get f of z is equal to z cube plus c1 upon 1 plus i. So, so we can write f of z is equal to z cube plus c. Okay. So we can say this is the fire magnetic function. Where c is equal to <coughs> c1 upon 1 plus. So, this way we are able to get the analytic function f of z, the u plus v or u minus v is given. So, here uh, we need to understand that. This is the pre-processing part up to the equation 3. 
so once you know what is given then uh, you have to find according uh, the derivative whether you need uh, psi 1 psi 2 or whether you need uh, phi 1 phi 2 okay and then uh, we have to treat accordingly whether it is a real part or whether it is a imaginary part and then rest is the calculation so finally uh, you have to conclude or you have to write the function f of z uh, like this okay so do you have any doubt uh, in this example Okay, that's great. Uh, you don't have any doubt. Uh, that's good. Okay, so I hope uh, you understood all of this. Okay, great.